One of the most interesting things I've ever heard Warren Buffett say was this. He said, I think I could make you a 50% return a year if I only managed $1 million. No, I know I could. I guarantee that. So Buffett, he said this in a 1999 Business Week interview, uh, but let's take a look at the full transcript of what Buffett said. So this was the full quote. If I was running $1 million today, or $10 million for that matter, I'd be fully invested. Anyone who says that size does not hurt investment performance is selling. The highest rates of return I've ever achieved were in the 1950s. I killed the Dow, you ought to see the numbers, but I was investing peanuts then. It's a huge structural advantage not to have a lot of money. I think I could make you a 50% return on $1 million. No, I know I could, I guarantee that. Because you see, at the moment, Warren Buffett is managing hundreds of billions of dollars. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway, his investing firm, is worth $516 billion. And Buffett is managing a lot of Berkshire Hathaway's net worth. However, if Warren Buffett was only going to manage $1 million, it would be a completely different story. In fact, it would be so much of a different story that Buffett reckons he could make a 50% return on that $1 million. In this video, I want to go over the different strategies that Buffett would use to get this, let's be honest, ridiculously high investing return. Because Warren Buffett manages billions and billions of dollars, he has to look at really big stocks. There's no point in Buffett investing just $1 million in a smaller company because even if he makes, let's say, $500,000 on this, it will do nothing when you compare it to the billions of dollars that Buffett is managing. However, if Buffett only managed $1 million, he could invest in those smaller companies and it would make a big difference to his overall portfolio. You know, if he made $500,000, that would affect his whole portfolio and give him a 50% return, making it worthwhile. And now I just want to show you what Warren Buffett said when he was asked about how he would achieve these really high returns. Buffett said this, he said there are tiny little areas, as I said in that Adam Smith interview a few years ago, where if you start with A and you go through and look at everything and look for small securities in your area of competence where you can understand the business and occasionally find little arbitrage situations or little wrinkles here and there in the market, I think working with a very small sum there is an opportunity to earn very high returns. So essentially what he's saying is you start like this. The very first thing that you do is choose an area that you are interested in. This could be artificial intelligence. It could be the semiconductor industry, the gaming industry, blockchain, whatever it is, you pick that industry and you become an expert in it. Then you go and look at the small stocks in that industry, the stocks that you can understand. And as you go over all of these stocks, you will find little wrinkles here and there, little hidden gems, little arbitrage opportunities, which can make you a lot of money. But the key is to pick an industry that you can understand and that you're interested in, and then look at all the small stocks in that industry and you will find the deals. However, I will say this, make sure that you follow strategy two, or at least understand strategy two. And strategy two is that you want to use strategy one, looking at smaller companies with USA stocks, or companies in the USA. Uh, Warren Buffett has a love for USA stocks because those were the stocks that made him rich. And the USA has a reputation for being trustworthy and very business oriented. And when you're analyzing small businesses, you need to be able to trust the figures and the information that they put out. And with USA companies, you can pretty much trust these figures. You know, the USA stock market is very heavily regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission and other agencies checking that each figure released by these companies, by these stocks, is correct. 
However, if you invest in small companies in certain countries, countries such as China or third world countries, you can't really trust the figures that the stocks put out. And this is just the truth. Go talk to Americans or certain Westerners living in China or people living in other smaller third world countries and they will tell you the same thing. The business practices and the regulation, it's just not the same as the United States of America. So if you're looking at smaller companies in those other countries, you don't really know if you can trust those figures and thus there's just too much risk in those countries. However, I personally will say this, other countries such as Australia, you know, England, Canada, I personally believe it's fine analyzing smaller cap stocks in those countries. They're very well regulated as well and they have honest business practices. But Buffett would tell you United States is the place to do it. Strategy three is to only buy stocks when they are selling for a price well below their intrinsic value. And that's the beauty about looking at small cap stocks because they are often so underanalyzed you can find plenty selling well below their intrinsic value. You see, often those big names like Netflix, Amazon, Microsoft are analyzed by so many different analysts that they don't quite offer the same opportunities as the ones that are not being analyzed as much. So with these small cap stocks that you are looking at, make sure that you know how to calculate the value behind them and then it becomes simple. Only buy them when the price is well below the intrinsic value. That's how you ensure really high returns. For example, this green line here represents the intrinsic value of the stock and the black line, the price of the stock. Because most investors invest with their emotions, you can see that the price of the stock is very volatile, but the value of the stock, it remains fairly stable. What you wanna do is buy this stock when it is well underpriced. I mean, that's pretty obvious because the less you pay for a stock, the higher the expected return is. For example, if a stock is earning $1 per year and you pay a price of $10, that's a 10% return. However, if you pay less than $10, let's just say you pay a price of $2, that means you're now getting a 50% return on a stock. It's pretty basic maths. But I know what you're gonna ask me, and that is how do you calculate the value of a stock it's a good question. And it's one of the things that I teach in my How to Invest course. I basically just use my Excel spreadsheet. I calculate the earnings and then the future earnings. And then we discount it back to the present day to work out the value. Uh, it's pretty simple. And for more information, feel free to check out my course. Okay, I've got some very interesting things to say in this video, so please don't click off and watch some Logan Paul video or whatever else junk there is on YouTube. And I've said this time and time again, investors are highly driven by their emotions. I've seen this time and time again with, let's say, Tesla stock. One minute, they're the happiest group of investors. They think they're gonna become rich. The next minute, they all panic because earnings are down for a quarter and they run for the hills. If you can take a step back and look at the facts, you will make a lot of money. And what you'll find is that the best opportunities to make money is when everyone else is fearful, when everyone is running for the hills. That's when you want to buy a stock. Just look at what Facebook stock has been doing over the past year. Halfway through 2018, it had that big crash where investors became worried about privacy issues and they had recent scandals like Cambridge Analytica. And the stock shot down like a rocket. This was the best time to buy into Facebook stock when it was cheap, when everyone else was panicking, when everyone was fearful. And this was, this was when I was buying a lot of Facebook stock because the numbers on it were so good. The fundamentals were great. If you look at the facts, the earnings were still, still doing good. The user numbers were growing and they were still expanding as a business. That's why I bought a lot of Facebook stock for my portfolio when it was cheaper. Uh, you can go back and you can check out some of my previous videos if you want. And those who bought when it was cheap, like myself, we made some great money with Facebook because we were greedy when others were fearful. That is such a key when it comes to achieving great investment returns. And I'll tell you this, there's a chance a stock market crash could occur in the short to medium term future. 
uh, if you can maintain some stable emotions and buy stocks when they are crashing, you will make some good money, just like those investors who were bought in 2009. At the end of the day, it's those that turn over the most pages, those that analyze the most stocks that will generally do the best when it comes to investing. The great investor, Peter Lynch, he said this. He said, I've always said that if you look at 10 companies, you'll find one company that's interesting. If you look at 20 companies, then you may find two. If you look at 100, you may find 10. The person that turns over the most rocks wins the game. The more stocks that you go through, the more shareholder reports you read, the more YouTube videos you watch, the better your investor returns are going to be, generally speaking. And you know, Warren Buffett, he says the same thing. He said, when I started, I went through the manuals page by page. I went through 20,000 pages in the Moody's industrial transportation, banks and finance manuals twice. I actually looked at every business, although I didn't look at some very hard. Reading has made him rich over time. He told the story of going through Moody's annuals in 1951. It was absolutely a question of turning pages. And the more that you can turn pages, the more stocks that you can analyze, the more you can learn about investing, the higher your returns are going to be.